reinforce each other. I don't, I don't like to think of, of a piece as an acoustic piece versus uh, an electronic piece. Um, I think, as far as my music goes, if either one starts dominating, the music gets kind of stale and boring. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in the, the dichotomy there, I'm more interested in the fusion of the two. Well, it's a funny thing. I, I'm a, I guess, for all intents and purposes, I am an academic composer because I have a, a degree in composition and I'm, I'm in grad school for electronic music, um, but I don't feel very academic. Uh, I, I still feel as though I'm making punk rock tunes and, and just, I'm just trying to take that, doing that very seriously. Um, and it just happens that the place, there's a somewhat of a, of a place for my music in academia. Um, and, you know, it's, things are pretty, pretty early on, so it remains to be seen if, if I'm, I'm an academic composer or not. Um, I, I certainly don't feel that way. I, I, I don't think my music is quite rigorous enough to, to be such. Yeah, all of my records have a, a strong narrative thread, um, and that's really the starting point of, of where one of my records comes from. Um, and it's usually the, the, the conceptual flow and, and how that translates into the actual music. I think about beforehand and, and kind of chart out uh, before, before I start making anything. Um, and I really, I tend to record a record from, from beginning to end. Uh, and that being said, I, I don't think that that narrative is too, too important for anyone to know um, other than myself. It's just a, a way for me to organize my thoughts and organize what, what it is the music is, is doing. Um, because I think I think that that the different themes and, and uh, sounds that come in and out of, throughout a record, one can pick up on that, and you can attach your own meaning. And and um, it's not really important what I think it is. Um, it's it's really just a tool, the narrative. You know, John, you invited me to uh, to do a record for, for the label after I came through Oxford um, on the winter 2009 tour. And at the time, I was starting to, um, that was like the very beginning of my, uh, my starting to take playing guitar more seriously and, and uh, become a more proficient guitar player. Um, and, and so I decided that the record I was going to take the next year and, and as I'm learning guitar again, essentially, um, I was going to record acoustic guitar improvs and, and not touch them for the year. And then 
and then see what I can make from that and, and organize those, those recordings into something coherent. Um, and as I did that, you know, I recorded a lot. Um, and as I was starting to go through it, you know, things started to fall out. Um, and, and I was like, well, I'm kind of a shitty guitar player. Maybe, maybe like the first six months of the, of these recordings are trash, you know, and I don't need them. Um, and in a bizarre accident, uh, all, all of those, uh, recordings got deleted. Um, except for a couple that I was working with. Um, and so I kind of had to start fresh and, um, and, and at the time when, when that happened and I was, I was trying to recover and, and put something else together, um, things, things were pretty turbulent and like, I didn't really have a, a place to live and I, and I was like about to move to California, um, and like kind of dissatisfied with, with Greensboro, North Carolina. And, um, so, so it came that the record was really about transience and, and, um, and one memory of a, of a place. And then the third track, which for, I don't know, for me, I think is the most important, is a recording uh, my last night at my home in Greensboro, uh, just of the sounds of that house. And, um, which, you know, I spent a lot of, I lived there for two years. I spent a lot of time sitting in my living room, just listening to my fan and listening to the cars and, and the, the birds outside. Um, and so that was kind of something that I wanted to hold on to. Um, yeah, and just keep that around for me.